Amagi Metals, where financial freedom is yours. How's it going, y'all? It's Pete, October 29th. I'm coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, the sixth stop of the Police Accountability Tour. I just wanted uh, to take a few minutes to do a quick follow-up to an incident that happened a couple weeks ago when I was in San Francisco. Some people have asked, you know, what's been going on since then or where's the situation now? So uh, I just wanted to be transparent. I think that uh, helps everybody or at least helps the truth come to light and show, uh, you know, who has something to hide and who doesn't, who acted in the wrong and who stands by their actions. The following week I made some calls and instead of um, trying to condense all those calls into one video, I just figured I'd make them all public, I'd make them all live. And uh, the only thing I did was remove my phone number and I removed uh, the long pauses when I was put on hold. But it's clear that uh, when those situations happen, I just have a quick transition. First video, uh, number one, is when was made on Tuesday, October 15th at 2.40 in the p.m. I called San Francisco's Mission Street Outfit. Uh, the video is just over four minutes long. I asked to speak with Mr. Robert Moser, uh, who's uh, the supervisor of Mr. Habib, Ms. Koo, and Mr. Wu, the three individuals that I interacted with. And uh, I left a message with his colleague uh, in which I gave an overview of the incident, named the individuals involved, and uh, noted my inclination not to go on the defensive. The second video uh, was made a day later, October 16th, uh, just in around lunchtime, and uh, I returned the call of a uh, investigator Wechter, and that video is uh, almost three minutes long. It includes my conversation to him as well as the voicemail he left for me, in which I indicated that I will not be filing a complaint. I don't believe you can get justice through these internal mechanisms, and then I questioned how it's being handled internally, especially due to the objectivity of the video evidence that exists uh, online. Uh, that, that I've recorded with my video camera and through the Bamboozer app on my smartphone. Uh, this third video was made uh, later that same day, October 16th. I received a call from Mr. Wechter. Uh, that video is almost five minutes long. And in that video, Wechter clarified to me that he's not a police employee. And uh, so I then asked him how he got my contact information. He said it was forwarded to him by Mr. Moser, the uh, Again, the police supervisor over at the Mission Street facility uh, as prescribed by law. Then this, despite the fact that I had specifically outlined that I was not filing a complaint. So I don't know why Mr. Moser felt it was okay to pass along my details. But anyway, I, I uh, reiterated to Mr. Wechter that I had no interest in filing a complaint, that I'll seek justice through transparency. And um, let's see, the next day on October 17th, uh, as shown in video number four, I called the uh, Mission Street outfit a second time uh, with the hope of speaking with Mr. Moser. That that uh, particular instance, I left a voicemail with him and uh, in which I reiterated what I'd previously communicated, that I'd sought to sit down with him and his three colleagues involved at the on the Saturday, October 12th incident uh, to watch the raw video and discuss on video you know, whether they stood by their actions and whether they thought them reasonable or not. Um, a few hours later on that same day, as shown in video number five, I received a call back from Mr. Wechter. Um, this is actually video number five and six is from the same call. It was uh, too long to upload as a single video, so it's split into two parts. Um, but essentially, Mr. Wechter says that they have received, uh, that he is moving forward with the complaint process because they did receive an anon anonymous complaint, and he, d he didn't uh, go into any more detail on that. But I know uh, a number of people told me that they had made calls. So I'm not sure who or what that was or if it was just a convenient uh, out for Mr. Mosier and his colleagues. But nevertheless, um, uh, I provided Mr. Wechter with the location online of the raw footage so he could investigate it himself. Uh, that raw footage is at youtube.com slash coplock raw as well as bamboozer.com slash channel slash coplock. And uh, Mr. Wechter asked me if, if I would be fine uh, recounting the incident as it, uh, what occurred on the Saturday the 12th. I said no problem, and that's essentially what happened, um, and hence the length of this videos five and six and why they needed to be split up. And uh, Mr. Wechter assigned to this uh, complaint, I guess, that he was uh, pursuing uh, number 589-13, and uh, 
the uh, additional piece of information that's not on video but is in this post below um, shows that uh, in addition to the $197 that are said to be owed, again, I didn't hurt anybody, especially not the people who say that I owe them money, and uh, uh, that $200 ransom is now uh, ballooned up to $500 a couple days ago. Uh, a notice was received from the Superior Court of California that said, you know, due to my uh, failure to appear, they're going to tack on another 300 bucks, and, uh, you know, whatever other threats they might want to make. But, again, I, I encourage you, if you have the time and interest, you know, check these videos out. I think they speak for themselves. And, uh, you know, appreciate everybody not, uh, not cowering to these uh, frivolous threats that are made if you find yourself in similar situations. The more we each do a little bit, the safer it becomes for all of us and the less relevant this criminal enterprise uh, is.